we're gonna be talking about Blythe dolls. Blythe is an 11 inch fashion doll with a changing eye mechanism. Created by Allison Katzman at Marvin Glass & Associates, which was a toy design company in Chicago, the doll was bought by Kenner in 1972, produced in Hong Kong, and sold in the US for one year. Kenner is also known for making the original Star Wars action figures. The dolls developed a cult following in part due to the photography book, This Is Blythe by Gina Guerin. In 1987, Tonka, the toy truck company, purchased Kenner. And in 1991, Hasbro bought Tonka. Hasbro gave Takara of Japan, maker of the Lika-chan doll, a license to produce Neo Blythe, which stands for the new edition of Blythe in 2001. Takara has used different face molds and body types over the years. Various abbreviations are used for the face molds. BL is the earliest face mold of the reproduction Kenner Blythe, AKA KB dolls. I believe all but one BL doll were made using Lika bodies. EBL, or the Excellent Mold, first released in 2002, essentially is the same as BL but has internal differences for the eye mechanism and was the first to be released on bodies similar to the original KB body, also known as Standard Takara body. Then there's SBL, Superior Mold, which was first released in 2003. RBL, the Radiant Mold, first released in 2006 and supposedly looked more like KB. They are also easier to take apart than earlier releases. Then there's FBL, the Ferris Mold, first released in 2009 with matte texture and smaller eye holes. The matte texture was discontinued in subsequent FBL releases. Then there's RBL Plus, released in 2013, and the same look as the original Radiance Mold, but supposedly lighter and easier to change the eyes. As I said, Takara originally used Lika bodies from the Lika-chan doll, which had rubbery, bendable limbs. Then they switched to the now standard body type that does not have bendable arms, but they do have a kind of bend and snap knee. So they have movement at the neck, shoulder, waist, hip, and knee. There are three different Takara doll sizes. First, we have the full size or original size, which is a one six scale body. That's 28 centimeters tall or about 11 inches. Then there's Midi Blythe, 20 centimeters tall or about eight inches. And then there is Petite Blythe. She's about 11.2 centimeters or about 4.5 inches tall. In 2004, due to the popularity of the Takara releases, Hasbro issued a license to Ashton Drake Galleries, part of the Bradford Exchange collectible manufacturers, to make Blythe replicas for adult collectors in the US. Blythes by Ashton Drake Galleries, also known as ADG, are basically reproductions or closely resemble the original KB or Kenner Blythe dolls. In 2010, Hasbro began releasing a small version of Blythe with their Littlest Pet Shop line and featured them as characters in an animated series. These little dolls are more comparable to the Takara Petite Blythes. Last year, Good Smile Company took over Blythe manufacturing from Takara. Good Smile stated they are using a new version of the Radiance Mold called Radiance Evolution with no changes to the standard body type. I have heard, however, various people complain about the quality of the hair on these dolls. Supposedly the clothing or stock is great, but the hair is not. Real Blythe dolls made by Kenner, Takara, ADG, or Good Smile come with stock, which can include elaborate outfits and accessories, and are packaged in boxes with clear plastic windows. While original KB dolls are very expensive, think $600 and up, expect over $1,000, the 2001 and onward releases are similar to pull-up in packaging and price range. This is the official Blythe retailer Junie Moon's website, and prices for Neo Blythe on this site currently seem to range from $135 to $200 US. However, there are a lot of fake Blythe dolls. The fake dolls, sometimes called factory Blythe, 
seem to resemble Blythe doll faces and size, do not come in official looking packaging, and do not come with any stock. They seem to range in prices depending on the site. Part of what makes Blythe so popular among collectors is their customizability, and artists and collectors will buy fake Blythes to change out eyes and hair, repaint and or re-sculpt faces, and put on new bodies. So let's look at this fake Blythe that I bought off of Amazon for around $40. It was not listed as a Blythe doll. It was listed as a 1 6 scale BJD doll. As you can see, it's just a small box, no window, and when you open it, you can see the doll does come naked, no clothing, no accessories. Her face is painted, so let's get her out of the bag. Her face is matte, which I do prefer to the shine. She has that kind of yellow eyeshadow above her eye, which I have seen in other original Blythe dolls. Her hair is mint green, very long, very soft, with a bit of a curl. Very happy with the hair texture. Let's get the little plastic band off that's holding down her bangs. And I actually thought this was a wig, but it is rooted hair. It's pretty well rooted, as you can see. The hair is only rooted to the very top part of the head, so the head is three pieces with a seam down the side and across the top. You can also see that the back of it says Bly Girl, not Blythe Girl, but Bly Girl, because this is not a real Blythe. But you could remove the top of the head by unscrewing the screws in the back. You could replace the top to switch out the hair. Uh, you could also open it up to get to the eyes if you wanted to change out the eye chips in the eye mechanism or alter the eye mechanism. And just as I noticed in other Blythe dolls, uh, she has eyelashes, but no eyebrows. You can see the eye mechanism changing the eyes by pulling the string in the back of her head. So we go from mint green eyes, front facing what looks like brown eyes, then side glancing kind of ambery orange eyes, and then front facing blue eyes, and then back to the mint green, which are my favorite. Now we'll look at this fake Blythe's body, which looks like what I have seen some people refer to as a pure Nemo body. It has a way more articulation than a real Blythe doll's body. So we have movement at various articulation points, but not full articulation. So she can move at the neck, she can move at the shoulder, out and over, and then upper arm movement, some elbow movement, and then some wrist rotation. She has some rotation at the waist, some hip movement, as well as some upper thigh rotation, and then some knee bending. She doesn't really have articulation at the ankle, which you can see by me pulling it right off. I was able to get the foot reattached without much difficulty, but it's very limited movement at the ankle for this doll. But it's important to note that it is a lot more movement than a real Blythe doll comes with on her stock body. So now we're gonna look at some clothing items that I picked up off of Amazon. We've got a little dress and a little pair of shoes. The dress came with this cute little bear bag. Uh, the shoes are still available on Amazon and were like $12.99 and the dress, I don't think it's available anymore, but it was $15.60. I believe the dress was listed as fitting one six scale pull-up or Blythe dolls, if I remember correctly, and it's just a cute, kind of well-made little dress. It's a simple, kind of sheer white fabric, but it is finished at the seams and it has a Velcro closure. The bag is very cute, made out of a faux leather material. It doesn't really open, but it has a cute little bare face. The shoes were listed as fitting Blythe feet. Very cute, very detailed with faux leather bottoms and then fabric uppers. 
Real Blythe dolls come with doll stands. I bought these two. The pink stand was $9 and the red stand was $5. I wasn't sure which one would work better. The red one is more traditional of what comes with Takara dolls. So here she is all dressed and I put her on the doll stand. This doll stand works, but her head is super heavy compared to the rest of her body. And I do wanna know for anybody out there who has a real Blythe doll, is their head that heavy compared to the rest of them? It's much heavier than a pull-up doll. So she's struggling a bit staying on her stand because she's so top heavy. This stand didn't really work for her. She is so top heavy, you can't really use this articulated stand to hold her upright. The outfit fits her, the shoes fit her. I did comb her hair out. Uh, I used this wide tooth comb from uh, American Girl. And I only got this much shed, which really isn't bad. Uh, like I said, it's very thickly rooted. The hair is very soft. It holds a nice kind of curly wave. I do like the aesthetic and the design in general, but I do prefer the customized lights I see with the softened features. I might, because this doll was relatively reasonably priced compared to a real Blythe doll, I might actually try customizing her one day. But let me know your thoughts below. Do you have a Blythe doll? What do you think of this kind of fake Blythe? Do you even like this style of doll? Normally I collect pull-ups, uh, but there is some overlap in the community between Blythe and pull-ups. So I just wanted to explore this doll line a little bit. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below.